Good afternoon and welcome to episode 830, uh, 830 that is. The topic today is um, manipulation, lies, patterns and other toxic relationship traps and how to avoid them. This actually is, is a distillation or a, a um, I'll say coagulation, a blend of a few different things I heard today and I want to speak about, speak about those and give you some clues and tips on how to avoid them, or how to recognize them first and how to avoid them in second. Before I jump into the whole topic and give you a download of all this stuff, let me start by introducing myself, what I'm about, why I do these talks, in case you haven't seen them before. Uh, my name is Barry Selby. Hi. I am an inspirational speaker, a passionate champion for the divine feminine. It's a word of order today, okay? Passionate champion for the divine feminine. I help women create balance and love life and business because I'm a relationship and love expert. And I'm also an author of the best selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for men and women, couples and singles. And I'll tell you about more, more about that later. I'll probably put a link at the back end as well. Ah, oh, yes, being a... <laughs> this one out of order. Being a passionate champion for the divine feminine is what informs my work working with women and why I'm so passionate about it. And also what started these talks over two and a half years ago, actually going towards three years now, wow, called Messages from the Masculine Inspiring Feminine Heart. So today we're episode number 830. And by the way, before I jump in too far, this is a Facebook Live first. So in case you hear me talking to people, respond to people you can't see if you're watching on YouTube, that's why. And yes, this does go onto YouTube later on, and I'll give you all the links for that at the back end of the broadcast, so stay tuned for that. And I'm probably gonna drop some invitations in there as well. Depends how the talk goes. So, today, to today's topic. And I called it manipulations, lies, patterns, and other toxic relationship traps, and how to avoid them, because there's a lot that happens in the dating arena where you get the wool pulled over your eyes, so to speak. The reason why I inspired this talk is I was watching a replay of two friends of mine doing a dual broadcast. They do a, a love talk with these two women who I love dearly and respect dearly and have been on their broadcast before, talking about some stories and personal experiences of toxic relationships. And I mean toxic in the nice, no, excuse me, I'm using toxic as a nice word to cover a much more heinous act with women who didn't trust their own intuition, their own guts. And this is part of the solution, by the way. Now, this is going to talk mostly to women, but some men can be involved in this conversation too because we also, speaking for myself personally, have been through some manipulation patterns, lies on the receiving end as well as giving. Just making sure I'm true on that. Yes, I've done both. Okay, just to be honest and transparent. So what I mean is that, and I've talked about this before, about how we tend to be attracted to a relationship based upon a premise or... Um, a resume, <laughs> for want of a better word, that doesn't match the reality. Now, you may have gone through this yourself in past careers, if you've ever been in a job where you had to send out a CV or, or resume, depending on where you lived, that's where you may have fudged the data a little bit. You may have um, exaggerated just a touch and added more things you did into your resume that weren't actually the true things you did. Because who's to know? You know, you get away with it. You get the job you're doing, you do okay, they're not gonna, they're not gonna care about it. Was I the only one that did that? No, I think not. The same thing, unfortunately, applies to dating and relating. In the relationship arena, I don't have percentages, so I can't give you statistics on this, but I do believe it's more than half. I could be wrong, but I think it's more than half from what I've heard, certainly from the community I speak to and listen to and hear from, that most people go into dating with a adjusted, in quotes, list of criteria excuse me, list of descriptors, because it's not the criteria they're looking for, it's what the descriptors they're presenting with. So they might pad their height by an inch, or their age by two years, or their weight by 10 pounds. Never done that? Mm-hmm. Um, their likes and dislikes, because the thing is, and also a lot, and another part, another part, part. <clears throat> rushing ahead of myself. This is another piece, by the way. In the dating apps, a lot of people write stuff in they don't really mean. Let's just be clear about it. You know, long walks on the beach, everybody does that. Not everybody does that. Let's just be clear. So people lie in their presentations, just to be clear. And then to compound that, people don't always tell the truth when they're in a relationship. Now again, maybe not you, but somebody you know, maybe experienced this in past relationships, the odds are in favor of you having experienced this, where either partner, just not saying you particularly, but I'm gonna hint that way, where you've, not, so you've actually held back on the truth. Maybe something came up and they asked you a question you didn't tell them the actual truth. You may have made up stuff or just not said anything, which is the same as lying, by the way. I was actually having a conversation with a, um, a friend of mine Saturday 
where we're having this long, long phone call. It went on for, for several hours. So we're going deep and covering some lots of stuff. We're actually going to partner on some things, I think. But she asked me, she called me out because I, I, I seemed to have drifted. My tendency in the past would have been to sort of go, no, 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 I was here, I was here. And then she calls, I know what's going to happen. Is they're going to quiz me on what they said the last two sentences, which I have no memory of. But what I said was the truth, which is that I was actually doing something else on my computer. And she thanked me for being honest. Now, that was a revelation for it in a way, because that context of actually being able to say the truth and face the consequences, and actually to be thanked for being honest, was actually, for both of us, a very emotional experience. We, had a, we actually bonded because of that. And the recognition is that sometimes honesty is a very um, early victim in relationships. So lying is one of those relationship traps, because once you start down the path of lying, it can be hard to get back. So watch what you say, watch how you respond, and watch what you don't say, because that's part of the process of being honest or lying, and it's a definite um, teeter-totter for some people. So my intention is to let you know that you can change it, but the thing is, don't go too far down the road of lying, because it may be hard to get back, because the problem is when you do lots of lying, you have a whole construction of life that's not real, you've created, that you've got to maintain. And then you've got to remember what you said to make sure you maintain the lie. Dangerous road to go down. So for me, as is quoted many, many times, honesty really is the best policy in a relationship. If you made a mistake, it's better to be honest and then work out the consequences with your partner than to lie and pretend it isn't because when it comes out, it'll be doubly worse or doubly bad. Okay, so that's one of those. Second one to talk about is um, patterns because patterns is something I talk about a lot. People go, patterns? What are patterns? Patterns, simply put, are ways of behaving that are automatic. As in, you don't think about what you're doing, you just do it without realizing. Now, in relationship especially, happens in work environments too, we tend to get into bad habits of default patterns and we do things without even thinking about it. This is our subconscious or even unconscious programming at work. I've said before about how you can find yourself driving down the road to get somewhere and you may be in, may have checked out and not realized you've driven six miles on the right direction going home without even thinking about it because your subconscious took over because your conscious mind, your conscious mind checked out. That's a beneficial one, although it seems kind of scary you're driving a two-ton, three-ton machine on a road with other machines and you're not even thinking about what you're doing. But for some, some people, and I've done it myself just to be transparent, we've had moments in time where there've been these gaps where we don't even remember we were there, but we got where we were supposed to go. It's an interesting paradigm. Bringing that into relationship, this is a thing that I have a challenge with myself in the past and I'm working on clearing it up, but also I know a lot of people have, is that we go into unconscious default behaviors, patterns. We do things, say things, respond to things, interact in a ways that are not things we would really choose consciously, but we default into those patterns. Now, there's a whole different discussion, I've done this before last week, about the patterns that drive us and the programs we run that mess up our relationships and also give us bad choices in relationships. And that's, not different, that's a diff different, excuse me, a deeper level, which I'm not gonna get into here. But I recommend you look at my previous broadcast, and I'll tell you the back end where you can find my other broadcasts, by the way. So the patterns that we run are the ones where we get to convenience and comfort. As a, there actually was a video I posted, replay I posted a few days ago about the first date and the 30th date. You probably know this idea. The first date everyone's perfect and you're gonna eat less than you're supposed to. You're gonna be on best behavior and be perfect all the way around. By 30th date, you're fighting each other's faces. You're just devouring pizza in front of each other. You don't care. There's a pattern that shows up. And this is the pattern piece I'm talking about is you get lazy with being with your partner. Personally, this is, a, this is a challenge for all of us, I think, is that it's, ta it's challenging sometimes to treat your partner like it's a first date every single day. Now, that's a high goal, I know. But to put that idea into your goals, your intentions, isn't a bad idea. You're not going to hit it most of the time, most likely, but the fact your intention there is to treat your partner like it's a first date every time puts you in a place of deep respect, deep appreciation, and deep regard for your partner. And if you both do that, it can maintain a higher level of romance and a deep level of um, care and love. That's part of it. So that's one part of the patterns that works. But the thing is, we get, we get lazy, we forget, and we start defaulting to patterns. This is the thing. When you're in a relationship, and this is how it works, just so you understand the mechanics, it just hit me right, really clearly. We've got somebody a few times and it's great connection and things are working beautifully. As time goes by, we get comfortable. And comfort is the trap. Because by getting comfortable, we stop efforting. We, we do less making things happen. We don't step up to create new ideas. 
especially challenging for new parents, by the way, is you get into a routine that you have to when you have a kid, it seems like, that you forget to have date nights. You forget to take time for each other away from the kids, which I recommend if you have kids, young kids especially, you know, I've got friends of mine who teach this, so I know it's true. I don't have kids of my own, so just to be clear, I'm referring to other people for this, is having that recognition that you need to take time out once, twice a week, a few times a month at least, to go out for a date with just the two of you. Hire a babysitter, have a friend take care of the kids or a family member so you can go out and, play and just be with yourselves. Before the kids, without the kids, after the kids, depending where you are in your life, making priority to have date experiences when you're in a relationship after a period of months, years, is a reminder that you still have the romance and keep it alive. It sounds simplistic, but it's very functional because when you do choose to make date conscious, that you choose to do it ideally more than once a month, maybe let's say once a week, let's make it really, let's set the, goal, the bar somewhat higher. Once a week to have a date with your, with your partner, an intentional romantic date where you drop everything and have a time out. Now, you might do this every day of the week if that's the way your relationship is. And if you can do that, wonderful. If, you, if your life doesn't work that way, at least committing to once a week once you're in an established relationship, that you make it a first date experience and have fun with it. That's the way to transform that bad habit with patterns into a new paradigm. So, what's lies, patterns, what was the third one I said at the beginning? <laughs> I said these titles now, I remember what I said at the beginning. Um, some of the toxic relationship patterns and the thing above it was, you know what, I'm just gonna talk where I am because I realized I, I, I had these three keys. Then I'll, I'll hopefully cover all three by the time I finish this broadcast. I don't know what the next, the first one was. You'll come back to me. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry sometimes. So my intention with this talk is reminders, education, and inspiration to remind you that you can avoid some of these traps that make a relationship challenging. And having this, um, how do I describe it? I was thinking about talking about gaslighting because that's, that, that's the extreme case, but to make up stuff, to create relationships that are not authentic, clear, honest, trustworthy, excuse me, um, and aligned is sad for me. It's a weakness. It's, it's choosing less than you deserve. Working with me is only for those people who want to up-level their relationship choices because it's easy to have a default relaxed, don't care, comfortable, lying relationship, anytime you want, go for it, have fun with it. But if you want to change your paradigm, if you want to raise your standards, if you want to have an amazing relationship, it requires effort, it requires choice, it requires commitment. If you don't commit, you don't try, you don't make it happen, it ain't gonna happen. And one of those ways it happens is you work with somebody else who can guide you so you know what to do. Because for most of us, it's hard to motivate ourselves to move forward. When you have somebody else as your accountability partner and your coach and your guide, it brings you to a place where your standards rise because you step up to the plate. And that's part of the reason why I love coaching because working with my clients, and I, I did say the word coaching, I hate that term, but I said anyway. One reason I love doing this work is because I see my, my clients' lives transform for the better and the relationship choices step up piece by piece by piece, and that is awesome. So the understanding I'm talking about here is making your relationship intention, your relationship desire, your relationship goal, or goals, plural, something you can actually embody, practice, and live every day. As I said, it's easy to get comfortable, and the trap is to get comfortable, but when you forget, it's not good. Okay, let me speak to that. I, I can't remember the word was the beginning, beginning piece, but I know the feeling what it's talking about. So as I mentioned, I was talking about my friends doing their Facebook Live early today, two, two ladies I know. And then they're talking about the story of how w women were not trusting their gut, in gut instincts. They weren't trusting, trusting their intuition, their body's um, awareness. And getting into those situations where they were manipulated, manipulation, that was the word. There it was, I knew it was in there. <laughs> they manipulated without their control because they weren't in charge. So part of the dating practice is not just to be on your best behavior, but to have all of your instinctual senses present. For some people, when they go on dates and they choose to go out, they want to they sublimate all their um, second guessing tools because they want to try and be as nice as possible, make it okay, and, and this must be the one type energy. That's the best time and actually the most important time to have all your sensitivity raised to a higher level so you can really make sure this is the one you want to be with. 
Manipulation happens when you're asleep at the wheel. I did mention earlier about driving without thinking. Manipulation happens when you're not consciously aware of what's going on. And when you get comfortable, it's easy to get manipulated because you're not present to what's happening. So what I said earlier applies to this more powerfully because when you realize that manipulation happens so easily, people, well, let's say it this way, extreme cases where women and enough women have happened to, this is not unusual anymore, have been attacked or hurt or abused by a man, even on the first date or even with strangers even, the, 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 the guilt of the part, the, the guilt that goes on and everything else is another topic entirely, but the fact that in her case, her gut instincts weren't either signaling her or she wasn't listening to them or she was numbing them out. Whereas if she had a radar senses about her, she might have been more protective of herself and acted differently. So I'm not going to go into all detail about that because it's another, another topic. But what I'm attempting to say is that any time you go out on a date, as much as you want it to be a great time and have a great deal of fun, keep your wits about you. One of the reasons why... Um, I've forgotten the name of ketamine. It was the date rape drug that was out for a while. It's been out, still out for a while. Why it works so well is because I think a lot of people weren't aware what was happening. So you've got to keep your wits around you. And the trouble is, you know, trusting a man to do certain things for you, ladies, sometimes can put you in dire straits. So definitely keep your gut, your gut instincts working. Trust yourself. And if you trust incorrectly, sorry, excuse me, if you trust overly and become more defensive and you protect yourself more, that's no harm, no foul. But some people think, well, you know, if I get too um, sensitive, I'll, I'll, I'll walk away too quickly. Well, if you walk away too quickly, you can have a second chance. But if you don't walk away time enough and you make a mistake, it may be too late. And I know I'm hedging around a topic. Basically, this, this is thoughts post-broadcast from my friends that were talking about basically date rape and sexual attacks. So I'm not going to get into that topic because it's a much deeper, darker topic. And it's a further that, that's outside the frame of this broadcast. But my point applies on the whole spectrum, is being really trusting of your own intuition. The biggest way you get through the journey of dating safely is to keep your wits around you. And that's true for men and women, by the way. So my intention here, my, my invitation here, is to really choose your dates intentionally to make your dating practice, your dating process, a very conscious and present moment experience. It's amazing what happens when you keep yourself present and aware when you go on dates. It sounds silly to say that, but a lot of people go on dates, they're just very casual, they're not even listening and they tune out. I've been there myself, I know it's not just me. <laughs> so, I'm seeing this anymore, I've, 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 I think I've pounded that point home a few times, I think I made the point I wanna make. So be clear and, and be willing to stand true to yourself. Ask questions that when they give answers to you, know if they're accurate or not. It's another piece, by the way. Is sometimes people give you answers, like the resume piece I mentioned at the beginning, where the document is falsified to fit the environment. So when you go up with somebody, be willing to ask them questions and verify that what they're telling you is the truth, because you can find out. And so, I'm making it sound like it's a, <laughs> detective interview process. Dating can be fun, but dating shouldn't be blind. Let me make it that way. So if you have any questions about this, by the way, you feel free to put them below and respond when I sign off. Again, this is my Facebook Live I do every day, and I do put this on YouTube, and I'll give you the links in a moment. But I want to put some some invitations in the links because it'll help you. First of all, if you're single and looking for love in all the wrong places, as the song goes, I highly recommend you sit down and have a chat with me, over the phone, that is. So in the comments, I'll put a link to a discovery session with me, a complimentary chat that is my gift to you so we can talk. That's one thing that will be in the comments. Secondly, I'm going to put the comments in my book because I did mention that earlier and it's a great resource, frankly. 50 different, principle, 50, different, 50 different principles for healthy relationships, for singles and couples, for men and women. You'll, you'll love it. Thirdly, um, maybe not in that order, I do, will put the link into my comment. I will put a link in the comments for the self-love practice. I'll side by for a second. Part of that skill raising, part of that truth seeking, part of that awareness bringing to dating is when you trust yourself, when you really honor and respect who you are. Some people out there, not you, but some people out there go on dates without really respecting themselves. How they expect to be respected by somebody else. Change the paradigm. Honor and respect yourself, become self-supportive, self-honoring and self-loving to the degree that when you go on dates, they've got to work hard to step up to you. 
that is the way to date. So to practice that, my self-love guided meditation is a powerful place to start, and I'll give a link to that in the comments as well. Yeah, I need to get in somewhere. So those three links will be in the comments as I mentioned, which is again my discovery session with me, um, self-love practice, and my book. Those three things will help you on the path towards healthy relationships. So now about the replays, because you may have wondered where I do these talks. This is my daily Facebook Live, as I mentioned, on my personal page on Facebook, always at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Unless I move it for some reason, which I do sometimes announce if that's happening, because I'm an event or something, but 5 p.m. Pacific time right here on my personal page, which is um, which is Barry Selby on Facebook. The replays go onto my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. Um, please like my page and you can watch them there. Also, if you want to watch them on YouTube, which is a better place, frankly, for the archives, because there seems to be all of them on YouTube, but they're not always showing up on Facebook for some reason. So on YouTube, my channel is Barry Selby, all my social media is my name, and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a playlist on there called Messages from the Masculine. You can watch them all there anytime you want, and you can scroll through all the way through, and then search for titles that stand out for you, keywords, etc., etc. So with that, I thank you for watching. I um, hope this made sense to you. And again, I do invite your questions and comments, because this may have made sense, it might not have made sense. So I appreciate you letting me know either way, and if you have any questions I can answer, I will do so after I sign off. So with that, I thank you for watching anyway, <laughs> and I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourself. I'll see you soon. Bye.